Quickly, we want to take one question from what has been written and sent to us. And it states that there are certain religious personalities on television and also live that has come here in Guyana. They have claimed to cure people suffering from AIDS, from paralysis, leprosy, and other afflictions. From an Islamic perspective, how can you explain this? The brother asked the question that the religious personality who come on TV who cure AIDS and cure cancer and various diseases, how can I explain in the Islamic perspective? And I'm aware that especially there are Christian missionaries who are known as healers who go and in different parts they have gatherings in which they heal the people and they show that this is due to the miracle etc. Jesus Christ peace be upon him said regarding such people. Jesus Christ peace be upon him said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 24 verse number 24 he said that there shall arise many false Christ and false prophets and they shall show you many wonders and miracles and if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, miracle is not the test. And he warned that they shall arise many false Christ and false prophets, and they shall do miracles and wonders, and if it's possible, shall deceive the very elect. Regarding these healing sessions, I have attended a few of these healing sessions. It is nothing but a gimmick. It is really trying to put wool over the eyes of the people. And these missionaries who claim that, you know, they can cure any disease, etc., and we in our foundation have a cassette, a video cassette, which is a recording of a program that was shown on the American Satellite Channel, in which they showed how do these Christian missionary healers, how do they work. And the full cassette, clearly, it opens out the full secrets. For example, there are people in the healing session, the healer, and the first row that the person who's supposed to be lame and there's a stick kept by his side so the healer says he takes the stick and he throws it away and he says in the name of Jesus Christ peace be upon him you start walking and the person starts walking and everyone starts clapping and saying hallelujah the joke was that the stick was kept in between two seats the person who was lame was the other person the person who starts walking is not the person who was lame how will a person come to know so like that all these things that either planted, the person who comes and says, I can't see, and then he starts reading, he could see initially itself. If really the missionaries can really heal the people, I being a medical doctor, I have approached these Christian missionaries who claim themselves to be healers, I tell them that why don't you come to my hospital? Why don't you come to a hospital and heal the people who are sick, cure them from cancer, etc., and you'll get ready-made customers. There are thousands of people who are sick and believe me, all thousands will accept Christianity. Why do you have healing sessions in the public where you know, you call out one person who I believe is planted by the same people. If you really want to show the miracle of healing, you should go to the place where people are sick. Go to a hospital, have a medical doctor really examine and check whether really the person is sick. If they really want to prove their case that they really can heal, they should go to the hospital and they should cure the people. I believe it is nothing but a hoax. Yes, regarding Almighty God giving the power for certain people to heal, we do believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was given the power by Almighty God to heal the people who are sick. I would like to clarify that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And as I mentioned in my talk, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he gave life to the dead with God's permission. He healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. Here it's a different case. Almighty God had given him a special power. Like Almighty God has given special powers to messengers to do the miracle which God did by them. But today what we have the Christian missionary healers, it's nothing but a big hoax, which if you see the video cassette, it will clearly expose how they do these tricks. I hope they answer the question. Thanks, doctor. We go back to the telephone. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, doctor. Uh, I'm Michael Hooper, Minister of the Church of Christ in Cumberland. Okay. Uh, my question, in fact, I have two questions. The first one has to do with the Quran and science. Um, there is a passage in Surah 2314, which has to do with the human fetus. It talks about the sperm, which is developed into congealed, 
blood. And then out of that clot they came a fetus and then it was made into a lump and the lump was made into bones and then flesh developed after. So what I want to know is how scientifically accurate is this? And the next question is, um, you did mention about Christ not being crucified. Now what I wanted to know was who was the wicked deceiver behind this idea of causing the people to think that Christ was actually crucified. Sorry, can you repeat the second part of the question, brother? Repeat the second question. The second question has to do with, um, you mentioned in the Quran that it was made to appear to the Jews as though Christ was crucified, that he died. Okay, so what I wanted to know was, who was the wicked deceiver behind this all? Thank you. Thank you. I'll put both questions to Dr. Zafir. Brother Michael has asked two questions. His first question is he quoted a verse of the Quran from Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, and he asked me to explain scientifically this verse, and he gave the translation correctly. The Quran in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14 says that we have created the human beings from a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid, that made that nutfa placed it into a qararim makin, a place of security, then made it into an alaka, a leech-like substance, then made that alaka into a mudga, a chewed-like numb, then made that mudga into izama, bones, then clothed the bones with flesh. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. These three verses of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, describe the various embryological stages in great detail. It first says, we have created the human being from anutfa, a minute quantity of liquid. And today science tells us that in one seminal emission there are several millions of sperms out of which only one sperm is required to fertilize the ovum. This the Quran refers to as nutfa, a minute quantity. Then it says we placed it into a qararim makin, a place of security. And today we know after embryology has advanced that posteriorly the fetus is supported by the backbone and the back muscles and anteriorly by the uterine wall and the entire abdominal wall. Further, the Quran says, we made it into an alaka. Alaka in Arabic has got three meanings. One of its meanings is a leech-like substance, the second is something which clings, and third is a congealed clot of blood. When this verse was shown to Prophet Dr. Keith Moore, who happens to be one of the highest authorities living in the field of embryology, he said that I do not know whether the initial stages of the embryo looks like a leech or not. So in his laboratory, he went and analyzed the early stage of an embryo and compared it with a photograph of a leech and he was astonished at the striking resemblance. So today we have come to know that the earliest stages of embryo look like a leech. Besides it looking like a leech, it also behaves like a leech. It derives its blood supply from the mother. It behaves like a blood sucker, like a leech. The second meaning is something which clings and we know the embryo clings to the uterine wall. The third meaning of alaka is a congealed clot of blood. And Professor Keith Moore said that during this stage of alaka, that is third or fourth week, the blood is clotted within closed vessels. The appearance is like a congealed clot of blood. And by third week of pregnancy, blood circulation does not take place in the embryo. And if you observe the conceptus, at this stage, it appears like a congealed clot of blood. So Professor Keith Moore said, all three meanings exactly fit what we have come to know in modern embryology. Further, the Quran says, we made that alaka into a mudga. A mudga means a chewed like lump. Prophet Keith Moore took a plaster seal and made it into a shape of an early stage of embryo and bit it between his teeth to make it look like a mudga, a chewed like lump. And the teeth marks, they resembled the somites from where you get the nerves. Then the verse continues. We made that mudga into izama, made into bones. Made the bones and then clothed the bones with flesh, that is the hem. And then we made a new creature. Glory be to Allah who is the best to create. Prophet Keith Moore said that these three verses of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, describe the embryological stages in great detail. And embryology is a branch of medicine which has recently developed in the past 40 years. And Prophet Keith Moore said, that we divide the stages, the embryological stages of human being by stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, 
But the Quranic description based on shape, that is alaqa, leech-like substance, mudga, chewed-like lump, izama, bones, then lahem, flesh, these stages are far superior to what modern embryology has done by stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. And he said that this Quran has to be a divine revelation and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has to be a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. Hope that answers the question. Oh,